On Christmas Day, depending on which service you attend, there are different readings assigned to the different times. If you attend a daytime Mass, the Gospel reading is from the first chapter of Matthew, verses 1 through 25. Verses 1 through 17 is Matthew's version of the genealogy of Jesus. I won't read through the entire list, but point out important verses. So here is the first part of the genealogy, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Matthew wrote his gospel to a Jewish audience. If you remember, Mark wrote to the Romans, the Gentiles, Matthew's writing to the Jewish people. It was important that Matthew shows the key people in Jesus' ancestry that proved proper lineage for Jesus to be considered the Messiah. So Matthew starts out by making the link across the centuries of Jesus to David and to Abraham. The Jewish people knew from their scriptures that the Messiah would come from the house of David. When it says son of here, obviously it does not literally mean Jesus was the son of David and Abraham. Better way to read this is Jesus Christ, the descendant of David, the descendant of Abraham. Because the Jewish people were very diligent in remembering their ancestors and maintaining their genealogy, all these names would be familiar to them from their scriptures and the importance of this lineage. Then in verse 2, the detailed genealogy starts with Abraham, the father of Isaac, etc. Gets down to verse 6, where it says, Jesse, the father of David the king. So here is where David fits into Jesus' genealogy. Then it continues with David became the father of Solomon. It continues from here down through to the time of Babylon, Babylonian exile that we've studied so much about in the past. After the Babylonian exile, the list continues down to verse 16. Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Thus, the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Messiah, 14 generations. Then the reading continues at verse 18, where Matthew tells about the birth of Jesus. Now, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. As I mentioned in the previous week's gospel reading, that Matthew gives us the story largely from the perspective of Joseph. Here he includes the dreams that Joseph had and his family genealogy. In this gospel, the kingship of Jesus is the major topic. He makes sure he mentions the Davidic kingly genealogy that starts the chapter. Then it goes through Joseph. Then the coming of the Magi, the wise men, is mentioned in Matthew's gospel. Matthew's gospel also mentions the coming of the Magi, the wise men, that we will see later, who are looking for the new king. This gospel also shows King Herod's reaction. As we saw in the previous week's gospel, the events in Luke are given to us from Mary's view. The angel Gabriel appears to Mary and announces the coming of the child. Mary's genealogy is also given in Luke chapter 3, verses 23 to 38. Mary's genealogy shows that she was also a descendant of David, but through the bloodline and not the kingly line. In this reading, 
First, we see how God dealt with Mary and Joseph in similar ways. Through angels, God informs Mary and Joseph. Joseph is told of Mary's pregnancy after she returns from visiting Elizabeth. In verse 19, Joseph was chosen because he was a just man, a gentle man. So that he would not divorce Mary, the angel appears to him because he had decided he was going to divorce her quietly when he found out she was pregnant and not by him. And then they are both told through angels that she will bear a son and that they will name him Jesus. Verse 22 shows that since Matthew is writing to the Israelites, he is pointing out that in order for Jesus to be the Messiah, he must fulfill the prophecies. So verse 23 is a fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Emmanuel means God with us, as the verse says, and Jesus, or the Hebrew version, Yeshua, means Savior. Verse 25 shows that she did not remain a virgin after Jesus was born. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and they named him Jesus. Jesus. 